Animal welfare is core business for the members of Australia's Zoo and Aquarium Association. Using the principles of the Australian Animal Welfare Strategy, new standards and guidelines have been developed covering the responsibilities of zoo, aquarium and museum operators with live exhibits. The standards and guidelines cover the actions of staff, the state of enclosures, animal health and well-being, reproductive management, transportation and record keeping, all in order to further enhance the well-being of animals kept for display, conservation, education or research. A set of general standards apply to all species and these are augmented by a range of taxon specific standards that highlight additional considerations for specific animal groups. One of the most important components of animal welfare is catering and allowing the animals to have great psychological health and positive enrichment. As a highly intelligent and social species, chimps can utilise tools and have the intelligence to utilise tools and one of the things with creating and providing a positive environment for animals with this level of intelligence is to allow them to utilise those skills and provide challenges and choices for them within their immediate environments. The National Standards and Guidelines ask operators to develop animal collection management plans. The two juveniles that we saw in the Tasmanian Devil exhibit are part of a cooperative breeding program administered by the Zoo and Aquarium Association. The standards and guidelines incorporate guidelines to help owners and operators promote genetic sustainability and avoid expression of deleterious traits in animals through thoughtful breeding plans. The standards focus on positive animal welfare and the psychological well-being of captive animals by requiring an environment that fulfills their biological needs. This can include quarantine measures to protect them from disease or the ability to interact with animals of the same or different species. This Wallamai exhibit caters to many different species of native animals. The species specific needs taken into consideration when designing this exhibit included different heights where animals can access different elements of the exhibit, whether it's the weather, sunshine, wind, rain and also sheltering opportunities. This red panda exhibit for example has incorporated deciduous trees so during winter the animals can receive the morning sun and in summer when it's quite hot as it does get here in Sydney they can receive optimal shade in the afternoon. All animals need to have their specific needs taken into consideration to make sure that they can remain fit and socially interact with the others in their group. 